what I did here is I projected out those numbers through 2035, just as a straight, straight line. Now, you can't know if that's going to dive a little bit or even go more vertical, but it looks like the, the trend is that you have more violent crimes being committed, which correlates to this. In 2035, you would have um, 635 inmates sent to the DOC from Dearborn County. Do some real quick math and say that each one of them is here for six months. You have 317 and a half beds full just with prisoners that we are going to do this. Um, the last uh, data I looked at was the average daily jail population. That takes into account typically the length of stay and the admissions into the jail. And as you can see from 2005, it was at 205 to 2010, it's at uh, 255. Now, your rate of capacity in your jail is 216. So, you had an 8% growth over the last five years, even when you didn't have any place to put them. You still, so they're using every available corner they've got, holding cells. So, they, they are completely full and probably can't get much more than 250 in there or any more than. So what I sh what I did is I, I did a few different projections based on that average daily jail population over the next through 2035. The, the dark line, the dark bars are the, are the, the, the past data, and then the orange lines are the future data. Um, based that your past growth was eight percent, I projected that out as a baseline, saying, okay, since you were full and you still grew at eight percent, that eight percent would probably be the, the bottom where your growth would be if you if you put an addition on the the blue line is a, a classification inefficiency that you see that's on top of those that that is a it's a 15 percent industry standard it's typically there because you know you have men women um, violent nonviolent people you have to separate all these people in different classifications and they have to be put in different in different areas and because you have to do that you can't have every bed that you have completely because you need to have those different variances. And that's what that's shown. But as you can see with with, with 8%, which I believe is a, is a low growth rate, with the inefficiencies, you will have 431 inmates by 2035. And what I, what I did here is I did 10% and 12% and 15% growth just to show you the differences in what those would be. Um, at a 10% gross, at a 10% growth, it increases to 411 inmates by 2035 and 472 with the classification and efficiencies. Right. You go to the next one at 12%, and, and, and you can see it keeps growing. Um, this, it, the chart looks more dramatic in how it does it because what I did is I took the five years that you had, and then each one of the next ones is a five year period. I mean, and at a 10% growth, if you're at 250 now, that's only 25 more inmates in a five-year period, which would be five more inmates every year. Is the, that's the growth rate. Um, if you go up to 12, which I believe is probably closer to what um, the 12% growth, closer to what I think you'll actually see, you, you, you'll, you'll have 449 inmates by 2035, and with the inefficiency, it will be 500. And then I also did a 15% projection, um, which shows a five, 513 inmates by 2035 and 590 with classification and efficiencies. Um, go to the next one. Now, what I did here on these charts is I did this for the 8, 10, uh, 12, and 15 as well. The orange is the is the, the, the jail population, the, the blue is the classification and efficiency, and the, and the, and the purple is the um, population increase that you'll see as the time goes on as well. And then I have lines showing your, your current rate of capacity and the proposed additions at uh, 144, 176, and 200. 
208 beds. So, as you can see from this 8% growth, um, it indicates that your 144 bed addition would be statistically full in 2020. And since it probably won't even be completed until the end of 2013, that's a seven year. That's a seven-year window to have it make a movie to even at eight percent, even at an eight percent growth. You can go to the next one. And and you can you can see how this chart will quickly climb as as it as you move to the ten and twelve. Now this one you would have 144 beds statistically full at 2018. So you start at 2020 is, is, is the best case scenario and then you drop down from there. So this would be 20. 2018, 208 bed addition would be statistically full in 2025. And with the with the 12 percent, you'd be statistically full in 2017 at a 144 bed addition and and uh, 208 bed in 2020. Based on that data, I would rec I recommend I just architecture recommends that you construct the 208 bed option because I I see that I see your jail population being at 300 the day that it opens and and without someone watching that very closely could be full in short short order a couple of years after that. If, don't have people um, watching that order. So I would also recommend that you uh, create a multidisciplinary committee to continue to examine the inmate population after you open the new jail, just to make sure that you don't have the sheriff coming to you a year from now going, I don't have any more beds, you guys are full of it. So, and then if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy. 